Robin, after doing television and film for years, you've decided to write a book. Can you tell us about the book, why you wrote it? Yes. Um, my husband, who's a cinematographer, was invited back to his alma mater to uh, help the senior thesis students with their films and to advise them and to kind of walk them through things. And so he said, hey, throw in an extra ticket. My wife will talk to the theater department, you know. So, um, so we did. And I'm sitting at my mother-in-law's, you know, and I took my reel back. And, I th and I'm sitting there the night before we were supposed to talk. And I thought, oh, they've all just been through, you know, theater history and stagecraft and all of these sorts of things, you know, what do I have to share with them that they haven't just been steeped in for the last, you know, four years? And, um, and I thought, oh, I can tell them what it's like to actually live the life of an artist, what that really entails, the day-to-day -day stuff that helps sustain you as you go forward. So I began writing the book on my mother-in-law's dining room table oh, wow. and that became the basis of my talk to the students the next day and then it just evolved into that and a couple years later I had the book which I just happened oh, to please, have right here. Oh would you show it? Yeah Isn't it's it amazing? gorgeous And there cover. are Ginzu knives too. <laughs> so it's, it's a, a survivor's guide to Hollywood, how love to play it. the game without losing your soul. I love the cover. Thank you, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, so yeah, Pilot's so great. I'm, uh, and it's it's gotten wonderful reviews, and uh, and the thing that I like the most about it, I think, is that it applies. I've gotten housewives, house painters, people who aren't in this business at all, people in the computer business from all over who have read the book, who say, this is just a book about life. This is just a, a good bunch of information about how to be happy and to, to uh, uh, just another perspective on how to live your life. It's sort of, it's obviously predicated on my experiences here, but it applies to everything. I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm working on a, a one woman show now. A friend of mine came to me and said, you need to do a one woman show, a ra you know, kind of the book as an anchor, but expanding it a bit. And I'm going to call it uh, a survivor's guide to Hollywood and other strange places because <laughs> there are strange places everywhere. And, uh, so, yeah, so it, it applies to all walks of life. And that, I think, was my chief surprise and delight when, I, when people started buying it and reading it and reviewing it. So. It's interesting you say about, you know, being happy, because I think a lot of people, and, and I haven't achieved success that I want to achieve, but I, I've heard from others, I think, forget which interview I heard from someone, that once you supposedly reach this, like, imaginary level, all your problems are going to disappear. <laughs> right. And the person said, no, that's when they really start to come out. <laughs> because you, th you, you think that once this certain level is achieved that you're going to just, it, it's gonna be like gr green lights and, and you know, just no. yes everywhere and you're never gonna feel a down day. No, you see, that's the, why I say live your life in between the jobs and the moments because that's the only life you really have. You know, there's always going to be someone on the ladder, on a rung on the ladder ahead of you you know, because you started when you started and they started when they started and there's going, you know, they're going to, there's always going to be somebody ahead of you. So you, you never reach the point because it's, it's an evolution. Our lives, all our lives are evolving at all times if you're paying any attention and if you are invested in your life, you know, psychologically and emotionally and metaphysically, you're growing. Right. From the people that are artists that have read your book, what's the chapter or what part it really stands out to them, do you think, from, from the feedback you've received? Well, I've, I've gotten feedback on all of it, which is lovely. In, in the middle of the book, there are little takeaways, little yellow highlighted passages that kind of have the uh, advice for you. And, and one of the things that someone has told me is the idea of celebrating really uh, struck home with them. And that we, we always wait to, um, I know I speak sometimes in these broad brush strokes, we always do this or everyone does this, and I hope you know I'm just, one has a tendency sure. to oh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, you celebrate birthdays and holidays, but you don't celebrate that you just got a parking space. You don't That's celebrate true. that you just, um, ooh, a residual check came in. Right. You know, you don't celebrate that, oh, we just had this lovely day together. 
you know? And, and I think we have to celebrate everything because as Napoleon said, uh, in victory, you deserve champagne. In defeat, you need it. <laughs> and so some of my celebrations have involved a, a glass of champagne, usually after I've stunk up the room in an audition or something, you know, like, well, that was terrible. All right, champagne. We have to do something to sort of counterbalance. But, but other than that, the, we should celebrate our lives. You know, I mean, I, when I was a little girl, I, I loved... I don't know why, but I, maybe because the grown-ups, all the gr people in the theater that my parents were around and I was around and came home and there were always parties at our house. There was always, you know, a big pot of chili or something more expensive depending upon how well we were doing at the time. But, and people together and people breaking bread and having a drink and, and, and I just, I was, couldn't wait for, to be grown up enough to make that happen in my own life. And so giving, someone once asked me, if you could live whatever life you wanted to live, what would it be? And now at this stage in my life, it would be to travel, to give parties, and to do a fabulous play once a year. That sounds nice. I would love to do that. And someone said to me, so why don't you do it? And I thought, good question. <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah, and, and so the celebration, this, uh, she said, this one reader of the book said, she loved the idea of celebration. And um, I encourage everyone to do that. You don't have to wait for the big things. Celebrate the little things because that's what's happening now. And as you said, you know, people wait, when I get to the place, that magical place where everything is perfect and I'm always in demand and there's nothing. No, all of your insecurities go with you, no matter how famous or rich you are. You know, do people like me because I'm famous and rich can be a new one if you need a new insecurity. Most of us have plenty of our own, but you know, <laughs> you can add new ones in. But there, there's never, there isn't an end because we're growing all the time. There's not a, I suppose there's a place when I make, as people could say, when I make this much money, then I will begin to live the life I want. But if you're not living some version of the life you want right now, you're not living. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, yeah, the John Lennon quote, what is it? Life happens while you're making other Busy plans. Busy making other plans. Yeah, I love, I love that. that quote. I love yeah, that. that's wonderful. Yeah. And, you know, so that, and then giving yourself credit for things that you accomplish, that is something that people have said to me. Uh, my niece uh, is uh, working with some women who are young actresses just come to Hollywood, and she's handed my book out to a couple of them, and one of the girls came back to her and said, um, uh, I took your aunt's advice and I am giving myself credit for all of the, I'm sending out my picture and resume and giving myself credit for that's my work today. I went to work today. I'm looking for agents and the putting in, that's not the drudgery, that's the job. You know, so you do that and you give yourself credit for having sent out three envelopes today. Have a celebration, you know? And when you get a job, you buy your friends around a drinks. I know I talk about drinking a lot, don't I? Um, <laughs> but uh, it's sort of the epitome of a little celebration. Sure. Me, you know? sure. Well, what do you say to people, though, that are scared to be upbeat because maybe in their lives another shoe drops once they, you well, know, they start, start listening for the other shoe. Guess what? You're going to get one. You know, it's like when you leave the house today, I, 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 or when I have left the house sometimes, if I'm not, you know, listen, I'm not Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm, I get pissed off too. Yeah. And the, the little annoyances of, of life get to me occasionally. But um, I notice that when I go, if I start swearing at the first idiot driver that, <laughs> you know, doesn't pay attention on the road, I am astonished at how quickly a lot of other idiots show up. Yeah. You know, you call that to you. Yeah. There's a metaphysical quality of that, that if you're afraid to do something exciting or fun because you're afraid it's not going to work out, well, it won't. It won't work out in one of two ways. It won't work out because you didn't even bother to try, so that's not going to work out. Or it's not going to work out because you pronounced not working outedness upon it, you know? And, um, and if you, it's, there's another, I don't know if this is biblical or not, but there is a, there are two that I like a lot. One of them is life and death is in the power of the tongue. I think that is from the Bible. I don't know, chapter or verse. And the other one is what you fear comes upon you. Mm. And I, I don't know whether that's a biblical attribution or not, but, um, but those two things are very true. 
you know, you keep pronouncing that, oh, I don't have enough money for the rent this month. I don't have enough money. Oh my God, what am I going to do about the rent this month? Well, when the rent comes due, you're likely not to have what you need. You know, I, one time when I was, uh, I didn't have enough money for the rent, I had $25 in my pocket. And I, uh, and I, so a girlfriend came over and I said, let's go have a margarita. And I bought it. And two days later, I had a job that paid the rent for three months. Wow. You know, I mean, you have to, you have to step out in faith, you know, that, that the things that you're going to, that you'll have what it is that you need, that things will be provided for, of course, with the caveat that you don't rent a Malibu mansion, that you don't lease a fancy car so you look good when you arrive at your audition, which is stupid because you park in the street or somewhere, the casting person isn't going to see you anyway, so sure. it doesn't matter. Sure. And if you need a car to make you feel good about yourself, then this is not the business you should be in. So, 